There we go. All right, guys. Welcome hey. to another uh, fun evening of uh, Atheists Having Cocktails with Christian. I'm talking to uh, hopefully a new friend, Manny Morales of the Big D Deliverance. Um, Very nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Uh, we've never had a conversation before or met, so this is going to be a fun conversation to have. This is going to be the first time, you know. Hey, so, you yeah. know. So, all right. Tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Like, uh, how did you meet Deliverance? Like, I know you've been their bass player longer than pretty much anybody really at this well, point. Well, there's that's a lot that's a lot of information there from the get go, bro. Um let's, let's break so, it down and tell so like, let's let's break it down from uh how I met Jimmy. And okay. oh okay if you want if how I met Deliverance. Well we'll we'll do that. We'll do that okay. out. So um back in the day, of course I'm jamming, you know, with with bands. Um, but and and my style is basically everybody knows I'm I'm more of a geezer butler style, yeah. know, from Sabbath. So that's my that's what I like, you know. And uh, deep purple, deep purple, and in you know Jimi Hendrix that type of style. Mm -hmm. And so I I was been jamming and you know became a Christian uh, when I was like 18 and uh, started jamming. And I was looking for for a band, um, you know that I can jam with that actually have the same beliefs I had. Mm -hmm. um and you know would be cool so i, I kind of back in the day in in la what, what they were were they had um what was it called uh classifieds you know um, yeah back in the i'm from la too okay so okay so i'm from east la okay yeah, okay well and i actually grew up in ventura but i mean they used to go down to hollywood okay. shows and yeah. the ventura? And, cool. yeah so okay uh, yeah, what was it bam the 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 local la magazine that have all the classifieds for shows and, and musicians looking for people people uh, back in the day yeah we would actually look through those classifieds in order to to look for uh re the recycler that's what it's called I think. okay well there okay. was another one in la that was like a like a, i think it was called like lax or bam or something like that it was a big magazine that would always showcase new bands coming up and they'd have always have a big cat classified in the back too so very very cool very like cool. i don't remember what it was called but you can always pick them up for free so yeah, so what I used what I did was I looked at that and uh, I was looking through it and it said uh, Deliverance looking for a bass player and I was like, huh, okay, never heard of the band at that point. It was um, we're talking like eighty five, you know, okay. um, when Deliverance I guess was barely starting, mm -hmm. um, and so it was through uh, it was an ad, uh, it was through K Chris Hyde, the drummer. Yeah. So, um, so you know, I, I contacted Chris. I got a hold of him. I was rapping with him, and then I was like, you know, cool. Um, what, when do you want to get together? I gave him a little bit of my background, you know, and so we met at a church. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's in his church, um, and we we ended up practicing. You know, I ended up auditioning for him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we played some Striper. Uh, you know, I asked them, hey, you guys want to jam some Petra? They were like, hell no. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, hey, but do you know any Sabbath? And, you know, don't he goes, the story is, I'm pretty sure he told you, but he was like, dude, don't think I'm from the devil or anything, dude, but do you, do you know any Sabbath? And I was yeah. like, I think so. Of course I know. <laughs> oh, you yeah. know, uh, but so we, we hit it off and we started jamming, but that's how we ended up meeting is through the Recycler in 1985. Wow, so you'd known those guys a while before you even joined the band. Yeah, well, I joined the band at that point in 85. That's when oh. I joined. Yeah, so I'm pretty much the original bass player, correct? Okay, so then uh, so so then with uh with the self-titled, are you're not are you on the self-titled? No, on Deliverance, the first yeah. record? No, I left. Okay. Yeah, I actually was with the band. I did a show with him. Uh, and we got Larry Farkas in the band. Yeah. So the first show I did was with Larry Farkas, Chris Hyde, and Jimmy. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, we played at the Waters Club. Yeah. Okay. Waters okay. Club. So then now, Brian's the guy that took your, your spot after that. I, I, yeah, that's Brian, Brian Carilla. I ended up uh, being in the band because he was actually partnered with uh, Larry Farkas. Okay. So Jimmy actually left and went to a, a Bible I think school or college or something like that. And so the band kind of like broke up in a way mm -hmm. um, and because we weren't doing anything. He was going to be gone for a while. Yeah. So what we ended up doing is uh, he, we got back together and um, we weren't jamming at all. And he actually, he said, well, you know, Chris, he's going to find another drummer for, for Chris because Chris mm -hmm. was doing something else. Mm -hmm. I believe at that point, but Chris ended up still in deliverance, but I ended up playing with another band. Um, and, uh, so they yeah, asked, so, so incestual, man, I'm figuring out, I'm hearing all this stuff, like 
you know, like, you know, like I've, I've done Glenn, you know, like he started, you know, it was in Deliverance and started Vengeance. And like, it seems that the scene back then was just like, everybody was in everybody's bed at one point in time. It, well, everybody kind of gravitated to each other to jam. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and later on in life, you know, after um, I ended up jamming with uh, Die Happy. You probably didn't even know that either. No, with I, and Melvin Caruso and, and Larry and, and Doug. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so would die happy. I ended. I played a show with them as well, and Deliverance was on that bill. On the wow. Same yeah. It's so like, I've I've talked with uh, with uh, with Larry. You know, I'll talk to Jimmy and Larry's been over there a few times, and like, cool. no disrespect, but like, die happy was not my gig. Like, I don't like like I respect like Sabbath and all those old seventies. Like, I love Rush. Don't get me wrong. There's a okay. few of those bands, but like as a kid, you know, growing up in the metal scene in L.A., man, like right. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to hear Slayer, and then. When my, right. you know, I kind of gravitated more to even the heavier stuff like the grindcore and death metal, like Napalm and, you know, Deicide. And like, I wanted, I, I was always searching for the heaviest stuff there was. Right, you know? right. So, so like, cool. you know, when, you know, Die Happy did their thing, I mean, and, you know, back then the Christian music store, you know, Christian section was this big. Correct. There was, yeah. and there was not very many legit bands that were good anyway. You know, Deliverance always was a standout, Vengeance, obviously, Tourniquet. Um, the Crucified, who are one of my favorite bands still to this day. And then, yes. like I've said before, when Mortification hit the scene, man, I think it really changed Christian metal all the all, all the way around because they were, in my opinion, the first, like, legit-sounding death metal band that wasn't... That you were looking for. Right. Yeah. Okay. Or, you know, or, you know, you know, metal-based or anything like that. They were a grindcore band. So, nice. kind of nice. like how I kind of was... Right. That, that that's your, that's how, how you category it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. That's cool. You know, I mean, for, for my style, you know, um, my style is more, uh, more heavy, slow, like mm -hmm. Sabbath bluesy, yeah. blues style, you know, heavy, thick, right hand, heavy blue style. Yeah. Um, and it's so, just crazy because, I mean, you've been on the, since uh, Learn, I mean, I mean, from what I know, like Learn is the first record I really remember seeing you on. Right. You know? And then oh, from then you. on, you know, like you were on River Disturbance and a bunch of other ones when Jimmy right. kind of wasn't even really doing like the thrashy stuff, man. He was just kind of doing more, you know, uh, I don't, I, I'd say progressive metal, obviously. Right. right. Progressive. Yep. Yeah. So, so how, how the chain of events I went that basically went, I left and then I came back in, I believe it was 92 when they were recording, um, uh, State of Execution. Mm -hmm. um, he he gave me a call when I was working. He was like, "Hey, um, you want to record this this record?" Hold on a sec. Real thirsty. I was putting up some uh, some drapes earlier. I hear it. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. So um, but but anyway, um, so he he gave me a call. I was working. He's like, "Hey, uh, you want to record on Save Execution?" I was like, "Okay." You know, back then I was like, I was working. I was like, okay, bro, let me give you a call back after work. You know, mm -hmm. so and I had told him I was I was gonna pray about it as well because mm -hmm. uh, my faith is you know is my faith of what I believe. And uh, so then he ended up doing the record and without me. So, mm -hmm. but which is fine. But I ended up coming on the actual tour of stay stay of execution. Okay. So I came on the tour. I didn't record the CD, but I. Okay. I've been on the since '92. I came back pretty much. Oh wow! So so from '92, then you know we 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 did uh, learn, and and him and I, Jim, you know, is like my brother. You know, I mean, yeah. so, since he's 15 years old. Yeah. So you know, and he's so, a hell of a great guy, man. I love talking to him. I love when we went out to Vegas six times and we hang out. And you know, I'll actually be seeing you guys in Springfield in, in a month and a half. Oh. So, oh, cool! That's yeah, awesome. I'm, in, I'm in Kansas City, uh, Kansas, which is right next to Missouri. Springfield's about a two-hour drive from here, so so nice, yeah. nice. Jimmy, well, and, then I get to meet you personally. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's because I mean, like I said, I mean, I don't know if you know my history, but like, um, I met George Ochoa when he was in Deliverance at Sanctuary when I was like 14. So okay. my first real show or like metal Christian show, other than I saw Petra a bunch, saw Striper, saw. Saw White Hart a few times, you know, Harmon and that kind of stuff. But um, I was 14 and my parents drove me down to Reseda, the country club, and dropped me off. And it was Deliverance. And this is right when Weapons came out with uh, right. and the Crucified Open Forum was Scattered Few. So okay. it was a wild show. It was great. So, yeah, I've actually, I mean, I never met Jimmy that night, but I, uh, you know, George has been on the show before. 
And okay. so, like, yeah, George was like the first guy I met in the scene when I was like 14. So I've known him since shit. I'll be 48 in, in like three months. So right. I've known George forever. And then, you know, doing the show, me and Jimmy hooked up and, you know, like I said, been to Vegas two or three times and we hang out. His wife, Helen's great. We've hung out, yeah. had food and drinks. And oh yeah, and, yeah She's very cool. we went gambling one day and he just, he's a hell of a great dude. He's a hell of a great guy. Cool. So you guys are just chilling out. That's, that's good, man. Yeah, that, yeah, that's how you build That's how you build relationships, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I, that's, that's pretty much, uh, I've known Jim since he was 15 Wow. Um, you know, the family knows me very well. You know, I mean, I, I've been in with his family. Pretty much he's like their family's like my family. So, yeah. I mean, you know, we're, you know, I mean, his dad, love his dad, his mom, you know, him, his dad. I mean, I, I helped him build stuff and walls. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have we have a lot of history. That's awesome. So, um, so but but as far as music is concerned, you know, so we hit learn. Yeah. And, and Jimmy and I, you know, wrote, wrote, learned him and I worked together all the time. So it was really easy for us to collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, then from learn, we did river and I love river. Great, great record. Yeah, it is. It's a great record. So, so we did river and, you know, the style, the style of playing, you know, it's, it's right up my alley and even the fast stuff, you know, I don't mind the fast stuff at all. Yeah. So, um, you know, from learn, I did Camelot and then we did Camelot, the, um, 2021, right. So mm -hmm. we did the new one, the redo. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, I'm on the live one. I'm a, ah, man, there's a lot of stuff. All the, all the, the, um, is solo stuff. Like, mm -hmm. like the, um, uh, what's Great it? Red, uh, Jupiter six kind of stuff. Not, not on Jupiter six, but, uh, okay. fearful cemetery. Okay. I haven't heard that yet. Okay, uh, so. Jimmy's a huge Pink Floyd fan. And that's kind of like one of my least favorite bands of all time. I'm, okay. I'm not into Floyd. I don't, I don't like. It's just my thing, you know. Well, but, Fear, Fearful Symmetry is more of a is a more of a um, uh, industrial music. Yeah. Well, so, I just I just bought his record Eraserhead, and I I, I threw it on. I, I had to text him. I'm like, I, I take back some of the things I've said, man. Like, this is a good record. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even though it still has those elements, I'm like, you you've done it. You've done it in a different way where it caught my attention. You well, know? Eraserhead is probably when he recorded my bass on that one. Um, that's probably one of my favorite bass tracks, bass tones right. that that uh, an eraser. I love that record. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of my favorites, my two favorite records is River Disturbance and Eraserhead. Well, that's great. So, that's great. Yeah. So other than Deliverance and Die Happy, were there any notable bands within the scene back then you were jamming with as well? Um, no, actually, I, I played in in an original band called Sabotage, but we didn't right. go anywhere. We wrote original music, but we never we you know were young, you know. Yeah. So you know, we were like 16, um, but we really didn't, we wrote a full album's worth, but we never recorded it. So mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I was with, uh, I played with a band called uh, Fair Exchange right. um, in between Deliverance and Fair Exchange is more of a, I don't know, a new metal, not, not even metal, more pop right. type of, of style. Right. Um, but I played with that band and uh, a couple of other bands, but not anything real notable. Um, right. so playing with Jim before I, I recorded the, um, learn album, I actually went to jam with, with die happy. So, right. that, and I, and I was helping writing, write the second album. Right. Um, so that's how that worked out. Um, uh, mm -hmm. but then I left, uh, die happy and went back with Jim and that's when, when I ended up recording learn. So, cool. so yeah, so. It's, it's so funny how. How the whole scene down there, you know, in the Southern California area is all connected with with so many people. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's way cool. I mean, it, it's, it's a small world, really. If you think about it, it's really small. Oh, definitely. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I mean, Jimmy, like when we when we you know have hung out with I man, he's he's told me some just wild stories of back in the day. I'm just like, wow, man, like. I can't believe you, that was even like, you know, the, the Christian scene back then, you know, with right. all the craziness and whatnot, you know? Right. So let me ask you this then, especially since you're more of the Black Sabbath guy, like, you know, that's that's what I've been, you know, really learning over doing these interviews and whatnot. Like, except for maybe Glenn Rogers, who really likes Thrash, like, nobody came from a heavy background, you know what I mean? So, oh, well, a Thrash I, background? Yeah, Thrash, you know, like Speed Metal, you know, Grindcore, you know, Punk anything right. kind of background everybody was more like you know we were playing this style or this you know older style like 
so then, you know, I really, you know, I didn't know for years that, you know, Bob Beeman was the guy, you know, putting together, you know, vengeance. And I was like, you know, kind of like the Malcolm McLaurin, you know, when he put together the pistols, you know, to, 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 to go out and, you know, raise hell and whatnot. But, in, you know, right, right. but in, you know, Bob's, you know, eyes a different way, you know, so I don't know. It just it, it just always kind of just has been weird to me that all these you know guys are playing this amazing thrash and doing well, but that's not really what they're about or what they were what they really were into, you know. Right, right. So at first I was totally into Hendrix, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and just the blues lines. Um, you know, no ready, amazing bass player. Mm-hmm. You know, no ready. So, so I mean, you have a three piece band, so yeah. you have to be able to 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 play parts to back up a guitar solo. You know, Nothing. or play rhythms with the drums because you don't have anybody else. It's just drums and bass. Yeah, backing up a guitar. Um, and like Deep Purple, I love Deep Purple. Love Richard Blackmore's Rainbow. Um, yeah. Scorpions. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was playing stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, but Sabbath, man, his bass tone and his yeah. style, the blues, heavy, thick bass that's i love it i gravitated to that Fair. and 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 that's pretty much what i cut my chops on is that sabbath style and but i learned how to play um like my picking style i learned to pick one one through four mm-hmm. so so that's how i learned it you know one through four a lot of people go one or two or mm-hmm. they'll do you know three to one but i go one through four four so it's really odd yeah but that's I, that's how i taught myself so yeah. that's my style but um that's how I actually I thought Geezer Butler played but he does it he actually plays differently but yeah. anyway it's it's a style that's incorporated in me now so um and I mean like do you enjoy I mean did you I mean growing up I mean other than that style I mean were there any of the like secular bands that were doing you know heavier music anthrax exodus you know Slayer, oh, I, any, any oh, of those like, bands did you I, I, I liked them but it wasn't something that I really, you know, I could listen to them, like, you know, uh, listen to a record here or there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it isn't something that I, I really purchased and kept, you okay. know, which is really odd. But with Jimmy, when he was writing his material, um, his style and, you know, the heavy fast stuff, I mean, it was so easy to play with him. Yeah. You know, it was it just it was his style, I liked the style he was playing, the, the heavy stuff he was playing. It it was easy. It, it, yeah. man, it, just, it just worked. So I didn't, I, I enjoyed playing the original fast stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much yeah, it. Cowboy, I've, t- I've said this to Jimmy many times, man. Like, like, Jimmy could write a mosh riff that just was killer. You know, I mean, a, a good, you know, just just heavy mosh pit, just, you know, that, that you know, uh, you know, like Exodus, um, uh, um, um, toxic waltz, you know, just that that real good groove that but still had the heaviness with him, you know. Right. He, he always was able to just write just an amazing, just good thrashy riff that just was it was heavy and catchy, you know. Right. So, right. Yeah. And that's that's what I like about his style, you know. He yeah. just he's you know his right hand is amazing. Um, he's a good songwriter, good, great singer. Yeah. So so it's a really super easy and um to to play and mm-hmm. to jam with him. So definitely. Well, really tell me good. a little bit about your your growing up in East LA and how you kind of how do you, how you how you decided that Christianity was was a path you were going to go down. I'll tell you a quick quick about me. I grew up in the church. I right. don't watch any of the shows, but if not, no big deal. But um, you know, um, we were you know Assembly of God, you know, evangelical. Um, I grew up in the church till I started questioning my faith about fifteen, sixteen. Mm-hmm. And just didn't really like what the church was about or what Christianity was about at that point in time. So I started reading, you know, you know, Buddhism and Hinduism and say, you know, I've even, I've even, you know, read the Satanic Bible, you know, Odinism, you know, just, you know, other Eastern philosophies and whatnot. And right. about, about the age of 21, I was pretty much just done with, with, with religion, all of it. And I'm not even, you know, I get a lot of comments were like, you know, you just hate Jesus. No, I don't hate Jesus because I don't believe he exists. I don't like religion, you know, whether it comes to, you know, Catholics or, you know, Mormons or, you know, Scientologists or, or any of that. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't follow any of that structure of, of, mm-hmm. of, of dogma. So therefore, right. that's just, that's just where I'm at in my life. So, so are you still, still searching for, for, no, I'm, I'm completely, you're, content. You're, you're I know what, content? You know yeah. My thing is like, for me, I believe in science and reason. I'm more of a logic, uh, lo- uh, somebody who believes in logic and, and, and evidence, you know. So therefore, you know, for me, Christianity and all the the, the stories of you know 
you know, raising from the dead. And especially when I started reading a lot of the Romans of how, you know, a lot of the gods were incorporated in, you know, from, from Roman times into Christianity, you know, the, the book, you know, Nicene Creed where, you know, all these books are, you know, deemed at this time, 300 years later that they are, you know, Jesus wasn't a, uh, a savior he was just a just a prophet and then you know they decided that you know all right we're gonna we're gonna go this way with christianity and these are the the books that we're gonna pick to tell the story of jesus where you know if you, then you look at you know books like the book of magdalene and the book of judas the things you know the gnostic gospels that they didn't put in that paints a whole different story so for me until i have more evidence in my life i'm just gonna say i don't believe in any of it okay well that's you know that's you're going to, you're going to believe what you're going to believe. You know what I mean? Totally. It's, 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 you know, I'm, uh, you know, you're going to believe, I'm going to believe what I believe, you know, I mean, so we're, we're yeah. good. Um, but I just want to say you growing up in East LA was probably pretty rough back then. So I yeah, mean, it, yeah, it, it, it was rough. You know, I mean, you know, those gang fights all the time. I mean, yeah. you know, is fighting you know is city terrace is where i grew up you know okay so um it's it it's east right off of eastern um pretty mm -hmm. much how people would recognize it would be the um the women's prison up there okay yeah yeah, so, yeah. yeah so that's uh where they housed what's her name um from uh i can't even think of his name right now i'm tired um haven't had much sleep last oh, yeah. <laughs> i've been working a lot um what what is uh Shoot, um, he's the guy with the swatch uh, on his. Oh, head. Manson. Manson, yeah, the where they housed the women there. Oh, okay, yeah, spooky yeah, so, and all those other. Yeah, yeah, all those women that were there. Yeah, yeah. so okay. they were that. That's where people would say, okay, that's city terrace. That's where you know where I grew up in that area. So, um, but East LA, man, you know, it was it was cool growing up because all the people that I grew up with, all the guys that I grew up with, they're like you know my homeboys, my buddies. Yeah. And there's like 15 to 20 of us and we're um, within about five to uh, seven, eight years difference. Mm -hmm. But we all hung around. We played football. We played basketball. We did we did all sports together as a mm -hmm. team. And it was way cool. So yeah. we grew up that way. And I, I pretty much lived there. Um, and then I moved to uh, Hesperia, you know, okay. eventually later on. But growing up in, in East L.A., it, like say going to school and seeing, you know, smashed uh car windshields and gang fights and guns and all that other stuff you know um, I, I got so it's funny because i get so used to it that if i went to this the, the liquor store to get like you know uh, to get something to drink like a coke or something yeah if I, at the time back in the in the day um if i had my girlfriend or or a wife that i was showing them east la because you know yeah. i i left finally uh yeah. LA. Um, but if I went back there to see that, you know, to, to show them, hey, this is where I grew up. Mm -hmm. There's one instance that's pretty funny, but to me it isn't. But it shows that I'm kind of like just so used to life there that I'm yeah. walking to the store with her. Um, and we get to the store and somebody does a drive by as we're going into the store. Mm -hmm. and she's flipping out and I'm like, no big deal. Yeah. And just walk in there. Hey, bro, what's going on? Hey, I haven't seen you in years, Manny. What's going on? Oh, yeah. uh, you know. And it's like it's like nothing. It's kind of weird. Yeah, when so, you grow up around violence and you're used to it, like even though Ventura was nice, we were next to Oxnard, which was, I mean, it's nicer now, but it was rough back then when I was growing up in the early '90s, and uh, especially Colonia, which was like the main, you know, gang area. But then we also had, you know, the Hell's Angels in our town and the Mexican Mafia down on the avenue and whatnot. So I mean, you know, I went to school in a middle school with you know, you know metal detectors, and you know, right. I mean, I think we were you know, white kids were like, you know, 25%. The rest were either Hispanic or black, you know I mean? A lot of gang shit, a lot of gang stuff. Right, you know? right. It's funny, oh. um, you know, I always take my family out to California to vacation back home. And, you know, a few years ago, I was seeing my daughter, we were in Hollywood. And I used to work in LA or in Hollywood doing security at the Roxy and the Whiskey. And cool. the Troubadour and other places. And, nice. you know, we're driving through, you know, Hollywood. And my daughter's like, Dad, Hollywood's pretty gross. I'm like, shit, you have no idea. You should have been here in the early 90s. 
I'm like, you know, gangbangers and hookers and low riders. And- it, it was so different back. Do, do you remember when, yeah, the, all the, the, the low riders, they just ride through. I mean, that oh, was yeah, rubberneck and Friday's Friday's Everybody Saturday. would just be driving through all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you'd see, I mean, down the street, I mean, I don't know if it's still there, but Tattoo Mania, which is Gil Monty, who's a, I'm in the, I'm in a, ta- I work in the tattoo industry. So he's kind of, you know, one of the OGs. But yeah, right. he's a Vago, and they were like right down the street. And so there'd be a shit ton of Vagos rolling around, and then you see banditos and, you know, right. you, know you know, angels and whatnot. I mean, it was just, it was wild. You know, you'd always hear a pop, pop you know, and a melting pot. Uh, right. always, uh, always. You know, I, I, that was the place to be. So everybody. Oh, yeah. was, and it was great. You know, I mean, I, I, I had a great time. Everybody, you know, what's funny is that everybody did get along, even though, you know, you have your different sex, everybody did get along. Cause they're there For to help. Part. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's cool. If, if but, it, so, down, it went down, but you know, well now, now it's so, uh, I haven't even gone back. I think I gone back there. I think of a couple of years ago, I was playing a show with a, uh, one of the cover bands. I play in cover bands in Texas. Right on. And, yeah, Cause I keep my, uh, I, you know, I have to keep my chops going. Oh yeah. So, so I play all different styles, you know, in different bands. Mm-hmm. That's one band I played in California. Um, we flew out there to play, and I had to stop at King Taco because that's my favorite taco place, dude. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I stopped down there, and I was like, "Man, boy, it's just freaking run down, dude. It's totally run down." You know? Yep. But was it still good? But you know, tacos are still good. All right, that's all that matters. Yeah, the tacos are still good. The burritos are, are good, dude. So I'm good. I'll 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 be burritos, my favorite. It's my so my daughter actually, uh, my daughter lives down there, and my sister lives there. I have family yeah. in Arizona, um, and I have family out in Michigan. Uh, but that's where I ended up in, in Michigan, believe it or not. Oh, you're in Michigan right now? No, no, I'm in Texas now. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but from there, like the story would be, I was in LA for 37 years, totally, yeah. totally you know, on and off. Yeah. But um, I ended up moving to uh, to uh, Michigan, um, Jackson actually, near um, near Ann Arbor and Lansing. Okay. And uh, it's it's kind of funny story, as far as like work is concerned. Like you said, you know, you're in the tattoo business. What I did was uh, in LA. I actually worked in law firms. You know, really? Yeah, I worked in. I ended up uh, in like uh, when I was 19. I ended up working in a law firm, and like doing messenger stuff. You know, uh, you know, filings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I I stayed in it pretty much all my life. Um, nice. And then I ended up going to Michigan and working as a, um, a manager for uh, Pitney Bowes Management that actually ran uh, law firms. And I was a manager there and uh, I ended up becoming a court officer in Jackson because they needed a court officer. So I ended up doing that. So I ended up being a court officer and wow. now, I, now I run my own business and I, I, I serve legal documents. Oh, nice, nice. So I've pretty much been in the legal field all my life. I hear, yeah, so, I started working in a tattoo crazy. shop when I was 17, and I'll be 48 in August. So so, so, so you've been doing this all your life. So that's, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, that was the thing. I mean, especially, you know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, growing up in Ventura was, I mean, we had one tattoo shop, and it was a Hells Angel shop. So, I mean, like, it was, it was right on Main Street, you know, after school on the weekends, hanging on Main Street, there was, you know, the cool record stores. So, I mean, it was just, you know, I was on to that life. So that freedom, like, you know, like seeing these guys not working, just hanging out at like four, eight, you know, four in the afternoon. Like it was just right. that the, the freedom and the rebellion is what always has drawn me to like punk rock and that kind of stuff. Cause in Ventura, we had a great punk rock scene with like bands like ill repute and Dr. No and aggression and all these just legendary early eighties punk rock bands that right, not a right. lot of people talk about because they're not from LA or New York, you know, but I mean, we had a great punk rock scene and, and metal scene. It so, was huge. It was huge. Yeah. I mean, at that time in that, those years, I mean, oh, shoot, yeah. that's uh, yeah, talk was, about cutting teeth. I mean, all those bands and, and just great musicians and great people. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. A yeah. lot, you know, the, the punk shows, I mean, I ended up working, I worked at the Ventura Theater for quite a few years doing security there. And it was just, for me, I just was never, I never, I mean, by the time I was, I was four, I wanted tattoos, you know, I wanted to, you know, ride a Harley, which I never did. Bikes have never been really my thing, but it was just always the freedom. And it just seemed like these guys got to do whatever they wanted. And 
I got to live that life, you know. I mean, right, right. I'm, going, I'm 17, going to any bar I want, never getting carded, hanging out with the older guys. You know what I mean? I mean, I had right, good right. guys looking after me and showing well, me that, how to do it. Well, right. see, that's cool. You you were protected pretty much. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, well, I mean, so accountable too, because if you fucked up, they'd let you get your ass whooped. You know what I mean? So, right, right. Yeah. Well, it's it's a learning curve. You're right. So you what to do and not to do. Yeah. Because you got the OGs there that are going to let you go through it, but not let you go through it. Where they're like, well, I went through this. I'm not gonna allow you to go through that if they're if they're backing you up, you yeah. know. So it was cool at the theater. It was we had a weird group of guys. There was, you know, a couple of you know, hardcore crips, there was a couple of Mexican mafia guys, there was some white power guys, there was me and some other I mean, but street was street, but at work was work. We all had each other's back at work. So but right. you know, if we, you know, ran into each other and some beef popped off, that was a different situation. But I'm very grateful growing up in the time I did and where I did, because I learned a lot about how to, not only how to be a good man or, you know, in my eyes, a good man, but, you know, respectful and, and, right. and hardworking and, and, you know, look after your friends, you know, your friends, you know, have to be some of the most important things in your life other than family. Right. Right. You yeah. Know? I mean, eventually what you find out when you're older is that family and friends are the most important thing. Yep. You know, uh, and, and for me, it's my is my relationship with God. OK, totally. so so um, that all goes hand in hand. And, and the way we grew up, I mean, it was it was great because, you know, you had friends that actually protected you or helped you and everybody was helping each other. It was mm -hmm. humanity was different. Now yeah. everybody's all closed off. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, but, you know, me being older now, I'm almost 60. So. Oh wow! Wow, you don't you don't look it, man. You look you look like you're in your. Or I would have thought you're like 52, 53. So. Oh, thanks, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, were you them. always involved in in church, or was it something that your family didn't do, but you found? Well, a well actually, be growing up in East LA and gro growing up in in LA, most Hispanic families are Catholic. Yeah. Right. So oh, yeah. so so I grew up as a Catholic. You right. know. I went in catechism. I did my, I, I did the whole thing, you know, catechism and, and did, you know, did it all, you know? So, um, confirmation, the whole shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, what drew me to, to uh, a non-denomination in church, like mm -hmm. you said, you went to church and stuff. Okay, and we were assembly of God. Yeah. You know, so, either. um, so this one was, it was called El Camino Christian Center in, in okay. city terrace, you know, and, uh, the pastor is named Chris and um and I, I my sister ended up going because my sister used to party and you know we were having a good time you know jamming out doing you know i mean you were teenagers you know yeah. you know you're doing what you do so uh one day you know she she ended up going to the church with her with her girlfriends with her friends and i noticed a big change in her life and, i mean just her her whole her appearance seemed different mm -hmm. her attitude was different and it wasn't like this, my sister, because I hung out with her all the time, you know, her and, you know, I, I jammed a lot. So I didn't actually get into, into a gang. I didn't get kicked into a gang. Yeah. And the reason why I did that, I didn't do that is because I ended, I found music and because music, you know, playing um, like uh, my buddy, uh, Ray Fuentes, uh, he was like, Hey, you, you want to be my bass player? And I was like, sure. I didn't even know what a bass was, Yeah. You know, but I was like, cool. But th because of that, I ended my whole life changed because if I didn't get any music, who mm -hmm. knows what I'd be. Yeah, right? totally. So, um, and to me, I, you know, for me spiritually, I think it, it was ordained because I mean, at this point, look where I'm at. My life has, has been pretty amazing. Um, but as then, far would you say that, 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 that there's pre, uh, uh, predetermination and what God does, or is it free will? Well, you have free will, but he knows the beginning and end of, of a story. He knows our whole, whole lives and what we're going to choose and not choose, depending on what you believe and not believe, right? And the, totally. I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely you know, the, the thought of Calvinism, which, you know, God is right. preset, you know, this many people that will come to faith and, and you know, that's right. the only people that are going to, but then you have, you know, you know, the, the other, the other, you know, thought process of, you know, God calls to everyone, just not everyone will hear or accept so, but that's, that's kind of when I, when I've asked other people, just kind of their thought process on that. Like, you know, if, if God knows, you know, the beginning the middle and the end of everything, then what is, what is, what is there to gain to make these people that he knows aren't going to make it, but then to punish them if they're not going to be the ones that, that, that accept it anyway. So what. 
All right, there we go. Sorry, had a little technical issue, issues, but we were talking about um, basically at this point in time, uh, uh, predetermination of, uh, of of faith in uh, the righteous that God calls that are going to be predetermined no matter what, that not everyone's going to get there. Um, so in your case, um, you were talking about your sister and you saw the change in her life and whatnot. Yeah, hold on one second. There's a, a okay, there we are. Now, now I can see you better. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, um, as far as like my sister is concerned, you know, um, you know, of course, she's my sister. I've lived with her my whole life. Yeah. But but I seen such a change in her. And I was like, you know, what's what's up with that? You know, and I, I gave her such a freaking hard time, man. You know, because I, I, I told her off all the time. I was like, man, what's wrong with you going to church and mm -hmm. all this other stuff? I, I gave her so much crap, you know. Um, because I was like, how did you just like, just change? You know, it's like, she's a different person. Still her, of course. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so that being said, you know, I ended up um, seeing such a change in her. I had to figure, I, I wanted to go and see myself, like what's going on. So anyway, so I, I went to the church and a, a lot of people from, my neighborhood were going to the church and friends and stuff like that. And, and, I, and, and they all just started, you know, you know, hanging out and, in and, and, you know, except they accepted Christ and, and it, it, it was such everybody, it was like a family. Yeah. Um, so at and, this point you were, you weren't doing the Catholic thing. You were going more to the evangelical. Well, I, I was still like, well, you could say I was a Catholic, but do we ever really Catholic? We go to catechism. And then after that, you know, we're teenagers. Do you go to uh, mass on Sunday? Sometimes you'll miss it for like five months. You know what I mean? It's not, right it's not consistent, right? Yeah. It's not consistent. You're going to sit down. You're going to kneal. Oh, you know, you're going to go through what you make some novenas. Yeah, have yeah. Good exactly. You know, go, go into, um, go, go into the, uh, uh, what is it uh, to a confession and, yeah. you know, and confess your sins and go do a hell Mary and, you know, uh, put $5 in there and start, you know, do what yeah. you gotta do. You, you already know the deal, right? Oh, yeah, so that's how that yeah. works. So, um, but when I went to this church, I was like, well, and, and notice my, uh, my sister changed so much. And, and so I, I thought, well, you know, there, there's something going on here. And when I accepted God at that point, um, within that time from 18 to 19, um, you know, I was, I was partying, I was doing all kinds of stupid stuff, but you know, I mean, but I, I, I thought, wow, this is amazing. I, and I felt a call on me and I was like, you know, man, I gave my life to God. And, and, and at that point, well, one of the parts that really helped me was like, well, I'm, I've been a, in cat, catechism my whole life going to, you know, having this priest forgive me of sins that he can't he's not he's a man how can he actually forgive me if, if he sin? he's a man you know he's not the creator of heaven and earth the creator of all things yeah, and so uh, catholicism well, is, is not something i've studied a ton of but what i do know like especially them you know thinking the the, the vicar of christ and whatnot man there's and all the saints and all the the, the mumbo jumbo and like Catholicism is, is to me just is is wacky 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 you know what i mean well, I, but when you grow up yeah. That's what you know, it's just, it's kind of, you know, I mean, it depends like in a neighborhood that you grow up, that's what you learn. Yeah. You know, you, you learn what's around you and what you're being taught. And this yeah. is basically what I've been taught. Right. Yeah. So now as being a free thinker of, uh, uh, in accepting Christ, I was like, wow, man, how are you going to forgive me, dude? You know, I was like, so, so that's when my mind kind of like opened up and I, and I started reading for myself. Um, and, you know, and everybody has their own, uh, you know, process as far as prayer is concerned. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I would fall. I would fall all in, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I don't uh, I don't profess to be like knowing every word of God, you know, right. from beginning to end. But I know who I am in God. and I knew my, my faith and what I believe. And so at that point, you know, I man, it was it was good. And so I, that's when I actually said, well. I need to find a Christian band, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then yeah. with meet, and meeting Jim and meeting uh, and Chris Hyde, yeah. um, man, it, I mean, look where I'm at now. No, I hear you. And it's the, it, pretty, it, pretty amazing how, yeah. how that took. <laughs> hey, yeah. what's up, buddy? That's my buddy, Craig. Craig? 
Greg. Is he all, all black? Yeah, he's like, uh, I saw some grapes from the table. I might want to oh, eat yeah. them. Oh, that's awesome. You know? well, I love cats, man. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Come on, brother. Get out of here. No, yeah, he, but, he's cool. You no, know, I mean, I have kind of a weird situation, like with a sister, too. Who I have an older sister who, um, you know, you know, I grew up listening. She loved, you know, the reason I love this style of music because my sister grew up listening to like The Cure and Depeche Mode and, you know, all the, the gothy right. shoe gay stuff. Love that stuff to this day. And I right. just always remember, you know, my sister, you know, going to church, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, the arms in the air, the, the, the praying in tongues and all that, that, that kind of, I believe, right. you know, nonsense. Yeah. She was hiding me. She really was. She was a lesbian. And, you know, when she came out to my parents who were, christians you know right. what did you know i mean they didn't accept her they didn't accept her lifestyle the church right. didn't accept her you know what i mean so i really feel that my life sister got better when she got rid of all the dogma that the church gave her and you know she's she moved out when she was 18 and i mean we live in the same town now and we're we're super close always have been you know and she's yeah. almost 52 and i mean she has a fantastic life because she is true to herself and is living the best life she can without the, you know, no offense, the bronze age, you know, thought processes of, of, of Arab men who, you know, were misogynistic and, 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 you know, in my opinion, you know, the Bible treats women as a second class citizen and, you know, always, you know, Samson is, you know, Delilah is, you know, uh, you know, original sin and Eve and, and all these things. So, I mean, for me, it's like, when even when she left the church, I was heartbroken. I was like, you know, oh, you, you know, I was 13, she was 18, 19. And right. I mean, I was devout then, man. I mean, that was the that's what I wanted. To, my thought, my calling life was I want, I'm a bass player as well, not as good oh, as you. Wow. You know, I, I play more punk rock kind of stuff and whatnot, but you know, I wanted to be a, a youth pastor. I wanted to play in a Christian band like Deliverance and Vengeance right. and the Crucified, you right. know, and that kind of stuff. But just just the more i've seen of and i'm not always saying the church represents christ I, you can't say that it's two different things but when you have people representing a brand that really isn't christian then it really starts putting a, a, a wedge in like what am i doing why am i believing this why am i here well you know it's unfortunately unfortunate how certain certain sects and certain um churches will do that I mean, we're, we're called here to love regardless, right? So, you know, if we're here to, to, to love and encourage and uplift, that's what we're here for, mm -hmm. not, to, not to tear down and break apart. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's, you know, it's sad that that took place in the way it did, you know, and, and then people think, well, screw it. I'm not even going to deal with it anymore. And so they move on. And, you know, and if, if, the, if the church, and I'm not saying just the church, I'm just saying a person individually that has Christ in them and that, that lo is, loves people that God loved us. I mean, at that point, we're supposed to uh, love and encourage and uplift, period. That's it. You know, I mean, if if they showed that love to her or to you at that time and, and weren't saying, well, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and, and making you guys feel like, well, man, I'm not a part of the church because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I'm young and I'm learning and, and I'm, and I'm making mistakes and, you know, we all make mistakes, oh, yeah. but, you know, but we can't be, you know, beaten, beat up or yeah. thrown yeah, at so it. There was, there was just a, a problem for me and, and, and a lot of the dogma of what, of what the church was and especially being evangelical with, with, you know, you know, the cast and especially, you know, I grew up listening to metal in the satanic panic era where, you know, you can't have this, you, you know, demons are coming in through your records. I mean, there was such outlandish, outlandish, outlandish things going on. Sure. You, know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I you know, yeah. um, I can't remember who I was I was interviewing, but, um, you know, uh, I did a bunch of research on satanic panic in the 80s. And I can't remember the, the FBI's agent's name, but he was pretty much the main guy that, that investigated everything. And over a thousand cases, he found not one one instance of, sex, of, of, of abuse in a satanic cult. You know what I mean? It was something that the church came up with that they, they put in the media to scare people, to keep people, you know, enslaved. Well, and I think that's a lot of the problem I have is that. You know, a lot of the, what the church, in my opinion, does is for monetary gain and for complacency to where they keep you coming back. They keep you afraid. They keep you not wanting to look at, you know, a broader, broader spoke, uh, spectrum of life. 
They don't want you questioning anything. And if you do, then you're a heretic. You're, you're, you're not truly, what's wrong with knowledge? What's wrong with going out there and just saying, hey, I might still be a believer in Christ, but I don't believe everything you're telling me. Right. Well, I mean, you, you, if you're a believer in Christ, that's all that matters. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I mean, that's all that matters. And, and, you know, and through prayer and through your own walk and your own life. I mean, you're, you're going to learn on your own, believe me. Yeah, oh, definitely. Sure. And you're going to say, well, I'm not going to do that again. Or, you know what? Wow, that was pretty amazing how that worked yeah. out. You know, I mean, there there's, there have been things in my life spiritually that that God has showed me. And I know it's only through him because no, there was nobody else and no other individual that can actually give me the answer that I needed. And, and he Give brought. An example. So, so like through through prayer and in as far as like, okay, for instance, I'm look, I, I'm married. I'm going to, and this is a true story. I'm, okay. you know, my my wife at the time, she she got into partying and and you know, and I'm working and I am coming home. The kids are like, "Where's your mom?" And yeah. you know, she's partying with her friends, and I had to go look for her. You right. know, that's. You know, oh, yeah. that, that, marriage, that marriage actually, you know, it, it dissolved, you know, because after 10 years of heartache. But anyway, but situations like that of her going out, me trying to find her and look for her for the family. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm praying. I'm constantly praying. I'm constantly in church. She's not. OK, she's doing the other. She's on. She's doing what she wants to do. And I'm actually devoted. OK. Mm -hmm. For instance, drove up to this one place that I thought she would be at. Um, I'm in a truck. I'm in the driver's side. I roll down the side window because the cholo comes up to me. And, he, and I'm just like, hey, you know, because I'm in, in a hood. I'm in, yeah. in a different neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. And so, so you know, when you know how it is when you're in a different oh, yeah. neighborhood. So, so you know, I, I, I pray that God will take take care of me wherever I'm at. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I roll, you know, I have to roll down the window, dude. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I didn't have those things. You yeah, know, it's I, it's, I, it's, I, it's, it's in <laughs> you are and what are you doing yeah. in my neighborhood? Yeah. So I had a Nissan hard body, and, but I'm looking for my wife, and, and her name was Candy at the time. So, you know, her name was Annie. But I was like, you know where, where she's at? And he's like, nah, dude, not Holmes, you know. Don't, yeah. I don't know. Because, man, dude, I freaking love your truck, bro. You know, I was like, yeah, here we go. You know, dude, I love your truck, man. Great. I can do drive-bys in this, dude. Cause you know, it's was, it was a nice one. So he's like, dude, man, I like it. He pulled out his gun, pointed at me, shot yeah. twice, shot twice. No shit. And you know what, dude, this true story. I went, I, I looked at him and I said, okay, that's cool, bro. And I, I was going to later homes. Right. <laughs> and I went like this when, when I, I went like this to my chest. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, because dude, my ears are ringing. He, it's almost point blank range. Huh? Okay. I mean, right there, dude. I mean, right there. I went like this because I'm, I'm like, okay, God. Right. Nothing. Hmm. I drove away. I didn't get hit. Crazy. I didn't get hit. How was that? I don't know. I mean, and I, I've had instances in, in, in my life where I'm like, how did I walk away from this unscathed? How yeah. how do you walk how do you walk away from from something like that if, it, if a higher power isn't protecting you? Okay, but, but let me say this. Maybe it's not even God, because I mean maybe there is there is I and don't think that I'm not I'm, no, I'm a realist. No, you know, right. I mean I believe oh. that there's something out there. I just mm -hmm. don't know what it is. I think there's something bigger than us. There has oh, yeah. to be created. Yeah. You know? so, so not only that instance, but driving in a vehicle one day, uh, going to Michigan, my brother-in-law flipped the truck. Oh, wow. Okay? And before before flipping that truck, I, I'm i sitting in the driver's seat. I, I mean, I was I was driving uh, for about 10 hours. Yeah. I got tired. I went to the passenger seat. I clicked it all the way back. I mean, all the way down. I'm just the same yeah. level as the as a truck. He flipped the truck. I mean, the van. He flipped mm -hmm. it. When he flipped it, it caved in on my side. Wow. I mean, all the way to my to here. Yeah. If I was sitting up, I would have been decapitated. Oh, I hear you. So, um, and the only thing that happened to me was a little scratch when I unbuckled myself. My son was in that vehicle, and he was a year and a half old, 70 miles an hour. 
he flew out the back. My wife flew out. My nephew flew out 70 uh-huh. miles an hour. A truck was in the back and he watched the whole thing. He said, when you flipped, they flew out. Guess what happened to my son? Nothing. One scratch. Wow. That, I, I, dude, I, I, okay. I don't know. I hear you. It's, pretty, you know? it's pretty, it's pretty amazing how things happen. Yeah. But, um, and, and, you know, as far as, you know, what people believe and what they don't believe, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, so as far as like prayers concerned, I, I just, as for me, just for me, mm-hmm. I know without a shadow of a doubt. For Definitely. Me, and, that, and, and that's, and, a, that's, and always that's a beautiful thing. thing. But yeah. like for you, you know, I mean, I, I pray that for you as well. You know what I mean? And where, and you, where you're, and where you're at. So, yeah. um, you know, and you've seen things and you're living and you're, you're moving on. Yeah. I've done a lot of crazy on. shit in my day. I shouldn't be, I should have been better. Be yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah, luckily, you, 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 could, you could probably count them. You know what I mean? You could you could put, write a book on yeah. on like, oh man, that man that happened. That oh, happened yeah. on that day, and that happened on that day. Wow! And then put them, compile them all together, and just look at them and say, well, w- w- what is the facts here? <laughs> you know, because like you said, as far as facts are concerned, you look. I mean, at I'm either the luckiest like, son of the you know, bitch in the world, or just whatever. But I mean, like, and this is a you know a personal story between me. Like, and this is oh. this is where. Okay, I'm gonna even say this where I've said it before. Even if God does exist, why, why, am, why? I don't. Okay, let me rephrase that. If God doesn't okay. exist, if Jesus was real. Uh-huh. The way He does things still does not make me think He is a worthy God. Okay, He's not a God I would worship anyway, because there are so many of the human human ideas that we have in our head that God has already portrayed on this earth. Like when you're talking about your family, you know, I have a little brother named Taylor who is. 10 years younger than me he is the most hardworking, sweetest i wish i was as good a man as taylor was wish i was and uh him and his him and his wife had a had a, had a son uh who was extremely sick when he was born a lot of surgeries um uh down syndrome all these other things a lot a lot of complications and you know I have family that way as well so. and uh, um the the doctors gave him about eight months to live. He lived, he lived until he was about 15 months, but there was nothing more he could do. And this is where, you know, it gets a little, a little, I get a little angry and a little deep, but not towards you, just right. in the situation is that right. what kind of God would create a child to suffer like that and to die? You know what I mean? So that's where like, even if God does exist, he's not a God. Of, get out of here, Craig. <laughs> he's not a God. I want to, I would follow anyway, because I don't think he's worthy of my love. I don't think he's worthy of of my admiration even if he gave me life you know that that's, that's not a god of love that's that's a god of of, of malevolence and, and and evil that would let a, a an innocent child and and my brother who is like i said the best person i know in my life to go through that and he's he's never been right since i mean he's still a great guy and they had another child who was who was uh healthy and she's amazing and she's a great niece uh-huh. But just for for God to put him through that and to put this innocent child through that. So what happens when when this kid dies? Does he go to heaven? Is he always going to be in this form? Is is he going to if, if 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 you know my brother is a Christian and goes to heaven? Does he get to meet his son at twenty one who's healthy? You know what I mean? Well, have, have you? I mean, I, you've seen a lot of, or you've read a lot of uh, stories on people that have passed to the other side. Or 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 they died and they come back. Oh, there's I, millions, say I, read it. I don't there's believe millions. it. You know? Okay, well, okay. So there's mil- millions of stories, a lot of stories like that, right? So I mean, if you if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. But you know, there yeah. but there's a lot of stories. A lot of people say, well, okay, uh, you know, hey, I I had this car accident and this happened, and the doctor told me I was. You know, I I seen the light of of the doctors. I'm in the in the. Oh no, I believe there there been people that have died and come back. Like you know, that's, like, what, I'm, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. People that died. Know, we don't back. know enough about the human brain to really know what's true and what's what's in your head that you've already been predetermined to think. You know what I mean? So I mean, we don't we we work what five percent of our brain. We don't even know what ninety five percent of our brain does. So in my case, when people say I saw a light. You might see a light before your nervous system goes down. You might see something, but this fact of, you know, it's no different than the fucking people that are like, oh man, I was on the alien ship and 
you know, I saw these little green dudes, like they're just right. as crazy and, and, and unaccountable as, as these people are to me. Okay. Well, well I mean, like what I was going to say is, sorry, sorry. Well, no, 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 that, no, that's fine. So what I was going to say is like, like, okay, your uh, individual had a, uh, 20 people had accidents within the last four years. And, and as far as those four years, all the people that had accidents, they, they were is so traumatized from their, from their injuries that mm -hmm. they, you know, that they passed, they passed, mm -hmm. you know, their body shut down. Yeah. They, they passed. I'm not saying see a light as far as like God light yet. No, I'm, right. just, I'm saying they're they're in an operating room. They're in an operating room. It's bright. Right. Yeah. You know, but, but okay. So in their minds, they left and they came back. Okay. But the majority of people that do have those experiences, there's quite a bit of people that pretty much say the same thing, right? Or now, are they, are they being parrots? They could be a parrot. Who knows? Okay. But if they're not, and and you have hundreds of people believe, going through the same scenario and the same situation, because trauma is trauma. And, you know, and, and, and people that are, are going to pass anyway, uh, from from their injuries or whatever, or their body shuts down, or what you know, ailments or whatever. Yeah, this this, um, this body it, will die at some point. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it's it is because it's not made. You know, we get older, it gets yeah. tired, it gets tired, and it, it, it's going to die. Yeah, correct. at some point we will all be worm food. At some point, at some at one point, correct. So, all these people that go through it, to me, they all have a lot of the same stories of what they actually uh, experience, mm -hmm. you know, some are different, you know, some, but like you said, some are, you know, the alien people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And some people will see a lot of, of that, but after a while, when you have tons and tons of people believe, uh, seeing the same thing, or even if they don't talk to each other, it, it, you know, I mean, they're going, still going through the same scenario and this, this is their outcome. As far as our brains are concerned, yeah, you're right. We are not we are not using our brains. We're yeah. not. I mean, because we have a, a big brain, yeah. but you know, but it, we're not allowing ourselves to actually experience a lot of things. Yeah, we're we're tapped into a very small percentage of what we're capable of doing. You know, I I, I don't know. That, that's that's something that I think is a phenomenon. The same way that people think, you know, they they've been abducted, they've seen, you know, uh, aliens, right. they've been transported to to spaceships. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and that's the thing. And, I, I don't have the answer to that. And that's what I try I, and tell people. I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the answer. All I can do is with the best information that I know about that I read, that I, I research or whatnot, like, and mm -hmm. that gives me my point of view for not only my worldly view, but also for my spiritual view. So, right. you know, yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I could be totally fucking wrong. I totally could be wrong, but I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't hedge in that I am because especially with you have, you know, the, the, you know, and I'm going to get a little weird here. You know, I mean, those the, the flat earthers and the 7,000 year old people and, you know, all, all the other weird stuff. I mean, they just found in uh, Turkey and uh, uh, called it a, a civilization in, I think it's called Globia Ateca. It's in mm -hmm. Turkey. They just found this, this, this city that basically had been buried under, under sand for thousands of years and they've dated it back to 12,000 years old. And, I'm not saying that science can't be wrong. We, you know, that's science is, is I think, in my opinion, the way that we have, you have a synopsis, then you have research, then you have your conclusion and then peer studied. If it all matches, then it works, you know, but, you know, for, for, you know, Hinduism, obviously we know this historically is the oldest religion out there, which is over 6,000 years old. So my question is, why has why did it take four thousand years for Christ to come, and then another two thousand years for him, for you know to play whatever whatever chess game that's been going on? I'm just saying in the realm of if I were if if I were God, and I and I'm I'm not, but I'm just saying like I just don't understand the deception, the game, the 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 hiding of of truth, other than the the real revelation, other than. You know whether you get to choose this or choose that, and that depends on whether you have eternal punishment. You know, so I don't, I don't know. It just, and I say this all the time, man. I'm not a scholar, man. I, 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 I have not sat in in a, in a library for years studying these things and know this verse and this verse. 
but I know how to be a human being. And I know that when I see bullshit, something's smoking with bullshit. Well, that that is basically your outlook. I yeah. Mean, yeah, that's your outlook. Like for like, you know, we're having a discussion for me. My outlook yeah. is, 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 you know, I understand your outlook, but mine is totally different. You know? So and that's how well, that, that came from your outlook. So what, what I, I, I know, I know, but I see as far as like faith is concerned. And, 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 you know, uh, reading the word of God and, and, and having a faith and believing mm -hmm. um, for, for me, just spiritually, the way I, the way I feel, not even the way I feel, just when I pray and, and when I read, um, it's just, there's like no doubt it's there. It, I have no doubt. I have no shadow of doubt. I know God has created. I, I know God, God created us. Well, I mean, it just, and, and a lot of people think, well, this is what you're taught. Well, well everybody's taught certain things in this world. Totally. Well, I mean, you know, we, we grew up in this world, uh, you know, like cartoons. We watch the cartoons. Everybody thinks the way it is. You know, I mean, we remember back in the day with Bugs Bunny. I mean, you know what I mean? So, totally. I mean, but but we, we, we have been molded in this world, right, to, to believe and to, to think a certain way. And gotcha. just like, like, like you said, you know, you're going to church and, and the situation happened in church. Um, and, and you're like, you know what, dude, I'm not even going to deal with that anymore. Like you and your sister, you know, Hey, we're going to, we're going to, yeah. we're not going to deal with that anymore. So, you know, for me, you know, I, I feel it was unfortunate. I mean, I wish I was there and, and to see your outlook and went out and being there as a friend, okay. you know what I mean? You yeah, know, because the great thing because, is, is like, you know, you know, for, for, for me, I, I'm kind of like, you know, I, I, I can't really I can't explain it because oh I mean, there there's certain things in, in, in like in prayer, in my walk that that God has showed me certain things. And I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I have no doubt without faith. OK, without a faith, you know, there. Yeah, how, can, how can you believe things? Yeah. With faith. I so, think that's so, a crazy thing with, with a lot so of people that, that, that can talk on my that will make replies is like you know they're like why are you so mad against jesus i'm like i'm not mad against jesus i i don't believe he, he exists i'm i'm upset about the people that that use his name who honestly i think of jesus was was real and was he was a very very good prophet i think a lot of what jesus had to say was 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 straight up, right on you know love your neighbor love yourself you know the very very just golden rule kind of kind of teachings you know, they're like, why are you so angry? I'm like, dude, I'm not. Like, if you, like, we'll hang out when we go, when, when I'm in. Uh, when I'm, to see us, Jamie. Yeah, man, dude, yeah. I, ask Jamie, yeah. man. I'm a fun yeah. fucking guy to hang out with, dude. Nothing gets me down. I'm a hardworking guy. I like to hang out and have fun with my friends. My friends are important right. to me. I will, you know, I will go toe-to-toe -to -toe for my friends any day of the week, you know? And people are like, well, you're just, you're just mad at God. I'm like, no, I'm not mad at God. I'm mad at men. I'm mad at men that do things in, in this person's name, which I don't believe is real but also you know it sets a precedent for you know why can't my brother-in-law who's gay get married you know love is love if god is love then he should be loved you know you know because there's two scriptures that talk about homosexuality in leviticus you know mm -hmm. if we're gonna go that way then christians don't eat shellfish because that's a levitican law don't eat pork there's a lot of things that i i think that that's what just gets me is that you know baptist methodist presbyterian Calvinists, whatnot, they all believe the same thing, but just a little bit fucking different. You, you, you know what, where, where I come in this, this situation, it's a personal relationship. Definitely. Because, because if, if you and I hang out for three months yeah, or for six months, say you and ages, I'm, I'm hanging out with you, Simon, every day, you and I call you up, we're hanging out, we're grabbing coffee, we're eating, we're, yeah. we're chilling, we're, you would know me so well. Totally. Right? I would know exact. I would know you, and oh, don't say that to because Ivan doesn't like that. Or no, but, like you that. but say but it to him. Know if I don't like it. Fucking no. say no. it. I love people who have balls, man. Okay, so, so no, but what I'm saying is, is that you and I would know each other, right? Definitely. I would know what you like. I know what you dislike. That's what God is to me: personal relationship. And I, I'm all for that. And and I don't want people so, to say I'm anti-religion. So as, as far as religion, yeah, as far as religion is concerned, you know, let's put that aside. And, and, and where's your faith at? My faith is in God, the creator of heavens and the earth, you know, and at my, my, the father, the son, the Holy Spirit. So, but my relationship is a personal relationship 
And that's where I am so comfortable in who I am, you know, so that personal relationship. So that's why I don't, uh, I don't look at, you know, people do it saying this and people saying that and people saying this. No, I have my relationship with God. I talk to him every day, every single day, you know, so. I do want people to realize with this show, I'm not trying to convert anybody no, oh, no, I know, I know. We know we're no, I have a lot of people that are like, you, you're just trying to, to do this for your own platform. No, because I think, you know, with your walk, with your faith is in, in my walk with what I believe in, it's such mm-hmm. a personal, finite, individualized uh, area. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's, it's something right. that if you're not on, if you and I are walking, like you're a bass player, I'm a bass player. Okay. Right. We're walking mm-hmm. and you show me something. And I'm like, fuck, I can't play that. But you teach me it, then we start walking together. You know what I mean? And we're going to have a different kind of relationship other than, you know, oh, man, that's not my gig. I'm going to go find somebody else that can play my style. You know what I mean? But Yeah, I I, I would say, see, as far as people are concerned, it comes back down to what? Encouraging, uplifting, and praying for others and helping others. The love. If if you haven't watched any of the the interviews, man, like, um, especially... It, it 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 breaks my heart too, especially like you know, Jimmy has been so um, up forth about really a lot of things that that Christians don't like that he's he's talked about, and you yeah. know, and I mean, there's so many comments to get like Jimmy doesn't know the book, he doesn't know this. I'm like, you know, man, just because he has a different take on it, get out of here, Craig. You know, you know, he he's coming at it more of a rabbinical study than 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 a. Okay, let me ask you that. I mean, you know, you know Jimmy, man. You know where his heart at. I don't. I know my, he's like he's my. I've known him for forty years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To explain. You know Jimmy. You know. Yeah. I mean, I have people that are like Jimmy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a heretic. He's this. I'm like, you, you people are putting everything such in this tight little nice fucking box that man, maybe maybe you know God and Jesus aren't don't fit in this box. Maybe there's a lot more room to expand where other things can come into play. Well. It, they're not going to come into play because you, you're you're keeping yourself, uh, you know, like you said, in a box. You're, yeah. you're, you're keeping. You can't keep God in a box. You can't. I mean, he he is he's everything. Yeah. To me, and you know, and for most people, I mean, I I look at look at look at the time, or you know, uh, before Christ, after Christ, you know, BC, AD. I mean, why did they create it that way? The world, yeah. they, they're using before Christ and after his death. But also the church had a lot of influence on how that shit worked back then too. Well, you know well, I mean? the, the, the church, the, the church has a lot, but then, you know, I, you know, man, man is pretty evil, dude, you know? So it, it, man got image and God's pretty evil too, man. You know, so, but, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that, you know, we have free will, right? And either you can choose to be a really nice guy and, and, and help somebody, or you can choose to say, I'm going to rip that dude off. Totally. You know what I mean? Let me so, ask you this. I'm a really nice guy who doesn't need Christ to be a nice guy. I don't need the Bible to, to give me my morality, which I don't believe in. I believe in ethics. I think they're completely different. You know, morality is more of a, you know, if this girl goes out and has sex with five guys, is that moral? No, that moral has nothing to do with it. You know, if she goes out and she is is a willing participant and, you know, no harm to anybody, that's just her living her life. And that's an ethical thing other than a morality thing. I think when morals come into play, when we talk about morality, it's very much coincided with, the, with, with some sort of religious term where I'm like, is it ethical to steal? No, it's not. But if I'm starving and I got to feed my kids, I'm going to steal. It's wrong, mm-hmm. but, I, but there's justified things for it. You know what I mean? So... I, I, right. You're not going to just go out and do it. Right. Yeah. And, and not that I want to hurt somebody, but also, you know, I would never, ever hurt, you know, an innocent person or a child or, or an elderly person, you know, where do you think that stems from? Your, 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 your good person, your, your, your kindness, your, your, um, your ethics. Um, where, where does that stem from? It stems from what I believe that I think is right or wrong. And what I believe that society as a society, what we have, you know, come to say this is acceptable or this is not acceptable. I mean, you know, 70 years ago in, in the Christian realm, it was very acceptable for, you know, down in the South to lynch, you know, other black preachers and burn their churches. I would have never thought that to be acceptable or moral or ethical in any way, shape or form, you know, 
I, I don't think, I don't believe we need morality. I think we need societal ethics and what we know, you know, 200 years ago, what girls could be married at 13. Now we're, we're more evolved. We're saying, all right, you know, you know, maybe, maybe that they're just kids, you know, as we evolve as, as a species, as humans, I think we're going to find better and better things that make everybody, you know, I mean, even 20 years ago, I mean, there's a lot of comics that would, you know, say things that today they, they can't, they can't say anything to that. It's not that they can't. Cause I, more, believe, I believe a joke is a joke. Uh, me yeah. and my daughter had this conversation. I, you know, she was, she's very woke and we were talking and uh, she was like, tell me a, a topic. I'm like, rape. And she goes, rape can never be funny. I'm like, not true. I showed her a Louis CK bit that he talked about rape. And it was a funny bit because it's intent. It's the way you place it. I think com comedians are the last free fucking speech of America. You know what I mean? They really can say whatever. That people might not like it, and that's going to be your gamble. But as long as you know it's Bill Burr, man. You know, I love that that that. Uh, he's like, you know, you know, there's there, you know, don't tell me there's never a reason not to hit a woman. Of course, I can think of twenty reasons to hit a woman, but I'm still not gonna. You know what I mean? Right. right. Well, I think well, as far as comedians are concerned, you know, I mean, we grew up with great comedians. Definitely. Great yeah. comedians. I mean, they went from they went from one to a hundred. Oh, yeah. And we, were, we weren't offended. It, they yeah. cracked us up all the way through. It, no, it was well, we visit things like I just uh, we went and saw Andrew Dice, Andrew Dice Clay here in Kansas City about a year ago. And he still did his, you know, you know, uh, you know, his fag jokes and whatnot. I'm like, I get it, man. In the in in the eighties it was funny because we didn't know anything. We were a different we were younger people. But now we know, you know, it's like, man. I get it, man. You're playing a character. I'm not going to write a Yelp review and be like, protest this guy. It's his goddamn right to take whatever and say whatever jokes he wants. But I'm just like, mm, I'm just not going to subscribe to it because it's dated. It no longer is, you know, Eddie Murphy, man. I just rewatched um, um, Delirious. And, you know, half it was watching these fags, watching my ass. And, you know, these faggots didn't want to touch my ass. I'm like, man, that, that worked for 1982, man. It doesn't work for today. Not saying that he's still not a funny person or shouldn't be or should be canceled, but I wouldn't try that shit today, you know. Well, things are evolving differently. Totally. Like, but know. again, that's what I'm saying. As a society, I think, you know, ethically we figure out what is and I'm not talking, you know, you know, you know, Berkeley fucking, you know, crazy to the left. I'm not saying that. I right, think right. there's gotta be a happy medium between you can be offensive and still funny, but it's, it's got to make sure that you're funny, right? That's the point. Yeah, and and you're not you're not trying to pull somebody down. You know yeah. what I mean? You're not you're, you're not, not pulling down, down on people to the point of where you know you really want to rip them apart. Yeah, now, that, that's a whole different story. Yeah, Chappelle did it. I mean, he got you know under attack from all the you know the the trans. Oh, yeah, oh well, man, that got that too. Yeah, he look. came back beautifully. He he did a special. He came back. And you know what? He's like, I don't hate you people. But also, I get it, man. He's a black man coming from a time where, you know, we've punched down on the blacks for hundreds of years. We've punched down on the Mexicans for hundreds of years. From the gays, from from the drag queens, from the, the punk rockers, from the freaks. You know what I mean? We're coming back. We're, we're doing better as a society saying, hey, we got to be equal for everybody. You know? American Indians. That's where yeah. I'm at. <laughs> I didn't want to go that crazy, but I'm just like, no, know. no, that's that's my uh, that's my that's my uh, that's my heritage. No, that's and that's that's awesome, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, look at look at what we've done as 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 society, and I mean, even what Christians have done, you know. I mean, throughout throughout, you know, the, I mean, maybe not even Christians, but in this point, but like the Catholic Church, you know, you know, in Africa with people dying of HIV, you know, still promoting no condoms. You know, you know, uh, female circumcisions, all these other crazy things, just because Catholics are weird about fucking getting laid. You know what I mean? Seriously, I mean yeah, that's that. There's, and there's there's a, of, there's a lot of brutality in this world. There is. Yeah, and that's that's the only thing that really makes me step aside from it. So that you know, I mean, and I am not uh, uh, an expert in what's going on in Israel and Palestine right now, and I'm just gonna say. It, it's not my fight. You know what I mean? It's not my fight. I don't want any, I, I don't want either either side to have casualties of kids and whatnot. 
Well, well it, it, it should it shouldn't be that way, but it's kind of like if somebody you know is throwing rocks and breaking your windows. I mean, you're not. Well, I get. It. I'm going to protect my stuff, but yeah. from, from what I'm understanding, it's very much about a sacred land that both people think they're part of that they're entitled to because their different book says they're entitled to from their God. You know what I mean? So, and, and, and that's where I say, it's not my fight because I don't believe in it. And I don't care which one I, I care about the people dying. I don't think that's right. Let me rephrase that before I get fucking canceled. You know what I mean? But you know, I, I'm not in that fight because I don't believe in, in, in their God. I don't believe. And that's the thing. I'm not even just picking on Christians. You know, I think Islam is fucking wretched fucking religion. I think it's very dangerous. You know, I think Scientology is dangerous. I think Mormons are dangerous. You know, I'm not, I, I want people to know this throughout the land. I'm not just going after Christians. I'm going after, you know, I don't believe in any of this stuff because it's fucking dangerous. In my opinion. Thank you. In your, your opinion, yeah. In my opinion. Thank you. So, and like I said, I, I don't follow the Israel thing, you know. I mean, I see a lot of posts on it and, and people are like, oh, we got to, you know, but also from what I've read about about Israel is that the only reason the Christians are in the game is because they're trying to fulfill the prophecy of the Antichrist to bring bring back the basically Armageddon to bring back Christ. I'm like, God damn, man, that's some that's some dark shit to 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 want to to, to to kind of bring down the end of the world. You know what I mean? To bring the world, but but then again, at the same time, you got to look and say, well, um. Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. All right, you're muted. Are you there? There we go. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, that's that. That was weird. <laughs> and we're having crazy. We've been having tornadoes and crazy weather around oh, here. You know so. what? Well, out here in Texas, uh, there are 17 people that passed away with these things already. I mean, dude, these these there's no they're no joke, man. Yeah. They're no joke. Believe me, you know, West Coast they, East Coasters that have never dealt with the tornado, they will they will mess your life up. <laughs> well, I mean, I lived in Michigan, so I mean there was there's tornadoes out there as well. But really in Michigan? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah oh, you wouldn't gosh. think you wouldn't think, right? But where I lived at was kind of like in a in a in a in a bowl. So it was kind of like it would pass over. So we were kind of we we're kind of lucky. Nice. So I, was, I was pretty good, you know. I mean, yeah. but man, they're dangerous, dude, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. but but as far as as uh, the um, as far as Armageddon is concerned, and and how people are people, in how they make it, the media number one, okay. So media can could could tell you and I something all yeah. our lives, and we'll believe it because that's what we grew up with, you know. And, and so as far as media is concerned, and just in in these different countries, um. Sometimes I got to sit back and and look at stuff and say, okay, well, I know what they want to do, or what they're projecting to do, yeah. what, you know, and and how they are going to try to um, manipulate people to do. Uh, to me, I mean, th they already have an agenda, right? Hey. So, so as far as that agenda is concerned, and they're going to do what they're going to do. I mean, it, it's it's going to play out the way it's going to play yeah. out. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, and so I'm gonna sit back and and it's gonna play out because I'm not there, yeah. okay, and you're not there, yeah. And, and and if you and I were you know in the country, we'd be actually be able to see hands on first what is really going on and look at the media, our media, and say, Well, is that is that correct? Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we, we really don't, we're know. getting the very, you know? very Americanized version of what's correct. going on, correct. And, 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 and when I want to really know what's going on in the world, I watch BBC. Because they okay. are non-biased, and I'm like, all right, that's what's going on. That's telling you what's going on, right? Right. So, <laughs> so, it's, it's, so it's it's pretty crazy how. Oh, hold on a second. I'm sorry. No, you're Greg. good. Greg, you want to be on the show for a minute? Greg, like, hey. Yeah, they. Oh man, look at that pretty face. What's up, Craig? I like that. I, I like that white bib. Yeah, get out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Ozbutt didn't show up yet. <laughs> well, yeah, he only barked for a little bit, and it was like, ah, really good. now he's chilling out because probably mom has some chicken downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but he's an Aussie Shepherd. Nice. He's, he's a seventy-two pound Aussie Shepherd. 
Nice. Yeah. So tell me uh, real quick. We're, I'm going to ask you a couple more, and then we'll let you go and go. Yeah. Um, okay. So you guys are starting off in Texas for deliverance. Correct. And then you guys are coming up to get we're, here, we're, right? we're, we're, And then you're coming to, up to Springfield. Come, come and take it um, in, in uh, really? Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be July 18th. Yep. Um, and, uh, and then the next two days, the, the following day, not Friday, but Saturday, we'll be over there in, in, in Missouri. Springfield, yep. Yeah, Springfield, um, Chain Unchained. Yep. Yeah, uh, I, I talked to Jimmy. I think you guys are staying in the same, hotel, same hotel as we are. So, oh, okay, cool. Well, yeah. then I'll meet you then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we're we're going to come out Friday and just kind of just hang out. And, okay. You know, one on and then, you know, hook up sometime Saturday and then come see okay. the show. Which is crazy because this will only be the second time I've ever seen Deliverance. I'll be, you know, forty-eight, and the first time was fourteen. So there's a big gap before, between. Wow, our... that that that's pretty amazing. Oh, what band do you saw with? What who was in the band when you when you see? It was uh, it was uh, Brian, Chris Hyde. No, was it Chris Hyde? No, Brian Kilarillo's bass, George Ochoa playing guitar, which he's playing guitar on this tour. Um, Jimmy. I think Chris. I think Chris Hyde was the drummer on Deliverance. Chris. Yeah, I think Chris so. Was, Chris was a great guy, dude. Well, then he went on to do uh, the Vengeance records, which were fantastic. You know, or the the one Vengeance record, the uh, Destruction Comes. Uh, you know, I never met Chris. I, he, he passed away, correct? He passed away, yeah. 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 He, he lived in Colorado. So. Yeah. Well, I was going to come out to um, to the to uh, the uh, uh, Immortal Fest but I'm getting ready to go back to LA like the day after that. So it didn't work out, but uh, oh, okay. I really wanted to see um, the, the stop the uh, tourniquet reunion kind of thing. Oh, okay. So okay. Yeah, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of bands playing there. Yeah. That, you know, people can catch up on, you know what yeah. I mean? So, it would have been, I would have wanted to see you in tourniquet. The rest of my, like, ah, I don't care about, you know, uh, and, and that's the thing, not that I don't care about it. Just, I haven't listened to, to Christian music in 25, 30 years. So therefore right. I don't know who these bands are. You know, right. so it's not like you know. I I would hate their music. I just don't know who they are. I don't. I don't have right. right, but you but you grew up with us, so you kind of know. Yeah. Well, yeah. know yeah. was my first metal show when I was fourteen. So yeah, yeah forty seven. Cool. Yeah, I'm like, well, man, we're gonna deliverance again. This is gonna be great. Yeah. That's gonna be cool, dude. I mean, we're, we're gonna rock it, brother. It's yeah. Be fun. Well, it was. I, I. It was weird. Me and Jimmy last time I was in Vegas for hanging out, and I was sitting next to him, and I was looking at him. And he just he's like, what? I'm like. Who would have who if I would have told 14 year old me that this time I'd be hanging out in Vegas with you, drinking and having a good time, would have never believed it. You know what I mean? Right, right. right. Yeah, then, I, I just have to say, Jimmy Man has been one of my biggest supporters and, and a great friend. And man, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I appreciate you giving up your time and talking to me. And I, that's that's the one thing, you know, I, I wish people really would 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 get connect with this show is about this is a debate, it's a conversation. It's a conversation, exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't. You do you. Yeah. I'm going to do me. But we can right, have right. a conversation about why we're doing this. And and, and that's how life is. That's mm -hmm. that we should actually talk. My weather's getting wacky around here, brother. There we go. Okay. So, yeah. So Manny, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it. Okay. So since it's getting weird, we don't get cut off again. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you.